I've been bicycle touring around the world for last 12 years. And around 10 years of these 12 years, I have cycled with a derailleur and chain drivetrain. And now it's around one and a half year, I have switched to the internal gearbox and belt. I have tested both of these systems in the most extreme condition you can imagine. I have cycled with them in minus 35 in the Arctic, in snowstorm, in a rain, in a mud. I have crossed the Sahara in plus 45. And right now when I'm recording this video, I am cycling across East Africa towards Cape Town in South Africa and using the belt drivetrain. And always my bicycles are fully loaded. So both of these drivetrain has been under really a proper pressure. Today I'm going to deep dive in the differences between these two drivetrain in 11 different topics. And at the end, I will let you know which one I do recommend and why. I need to mention the video is totally independent and it's not sponsored by any of the brands I'm mentioning in this video. First, durability. I have pushed both of these drivetrain with a fully loaded touring bike to the top of the mountains, really, really steep hills. I have cycled with them and I ever had a problem with either of them. I never broke a chain or belt. Belt has been used on automotive industry under high pressure for years. The belt I am using is the Gates Carbon Drive CDX model. This belt has a carbon fiber cords inside of it which covered with the polymer and it feels really, really robust and also it doesn't stretch. I can trust the belt more than 11 speed chain. One small tip here, if you're cycling around the world with a belt, Usually people, they ever seen a belt, so they come and they try to twist the belt and look at it. You need to be aware because you cannot really twist the belt. If you twist the belt, you are going to damage those cords and that can be a problem. Number two, maintenance. They both need a maintenance, but belt much less compared to the chain. I have cleaned my belt during last one and a half years only six times but when i was cycling with the chain i used to clean it once or twice a week depends on a condition i'm cycling belt stays really clean because there's no any oil on the belt there's no metal on metal contact so there's no need for an oil like a chain that's one of the reason belt doesn't absorb any sand or dirt or i don't know uh, mod that's really really amazing and it really stands out when I cycle in winter or in autumn so I really don't need to worry so much about cleaning it that's really really handy cleaning the belt it's a very easy and straightforward job you just need a little bit of water and a brush uh, you wash your belt and your sprockets and then you're good to go in a dry and sandy conditions belt can start to make a squeaking sound I would recommend to have a silicone spray with you so when this happens you can clean your belt, wash your belt and then put a silicone spray and you're good to go. One small tip here, if you are cycling for example for I don't know a few days, one week in really really muddy condition, I would recommend to higher the tension of your belt because when the tension is high that will help the belt to clean off the mud itself. So it's really, really nice. But again, after that Vombic, you need to return it back to the normal tension so you don't hurt your bearings. But I want to mention, I have cycled with the chain in winter, in mud, in rain. It works, but just you need to clean it very, very often. When I was cycling in Sahara, Almost daily, sometimes twice a day, I was cleaning my chain. For me, it takes around four minutes of my time to clean the whole chain drivetrain. So it's not really a big deal, I have to mention that, but definitely belt is very convenient. With a belt, you don't need to be worried about the rust, especially if you're cycling in north in winter, where they put a lot of salt on the road, that helps the chain to get rusty quite fast. Number three. Longevity. Which one lasts longer? Here belt is a clear winner. 
belt lasts around three times more than the chain. I have cycled with my chain and derailleur drivetrain around seven to 10,000 kilometer, but I use two chain and each thousand kilometer, uh, I change the chain, swap the chains. But with the belt, you put the drivetrain there and you can cycle over 20,000 kilometer with it. For me, this is the biggest improvement over the chain because uh, I'm cycling around the world full time. I do not have to be worried about my drivetrain each seven, 8,000 kilometer and go to the big town and try to find the cassette and chain and front chain rings. So uh, when I go to the big town, imagine I'm going to pay for accommodation. Everything is more expensive. Uh, I, I'm going to a little bit um, change my route. So all of these costs time and money, but with the belt, it's much, much more easier. I can just go 20,000 kilometers, 25,000 kilometers, and after that, I can change my whole drivetrain. That is really a nice peace of mind. Number four, efficiency. I do not feel any difference between the efficiency of the belt and the chain. For me, they both work very, very similar, and I don't really see any difference. There is a lot of talk online about the belt being slightly less efficient, but to be honest, I am on a bicycle. I am not an airplane pilot, and I'm not try trying to take off with the airplane. So, you know, it is one of those things which, you know, for me, it doesn't make any sense, to be honest. The difference while riding, I feel, is the belt is really, really smooth and it feels very nice to cycle with. Uh, there's no metal on metal contact and that's really, a nice, um, that's really nice for me. I really, really like it. Price. Belt, it's more expensive compared to the chain, uh, but again, you need to replace the chain pretty often. Number six, frame. If you want to put a belt on your bicycle, you need a specific frame. You cannot just go out and put the a belt on any bike frame. With the chain, you can do that. All the bicycle frame out there, they are compatible with the chain. With the belt, you need a specific frame made for belt. And this frame should have a two important feature. Number one, it needs to be stiff. That means it shouldn't flex side by side because if it flexes side by side, belt is going to jump off from the cogs. Especially if you are using the belt for a touring or bike packing, your bicycle is going to flex more under the heavy load. The second feature your frame needs to have, it is the belt splitter. So you can put the belt on your bike because you cannot uh, split the belt like you do split the chain. So with the belt, you need to be able to split your bike frame. Every bike manufacturer, they do design a different kind of um, frame splitter for the belt compatible bikes. I would really recommend to pay attention and make sure that splitter is well designed. For example, Tutu Train has a really, really durable uh, design for the belt splitter. It's over here, as you can see, and it is really, really robust, and I haven't had any issue with it. A company called Wear, they have designed the belt for a bicycle, which you can actually split the belt and put it back together. With this design, you do not need a frame splitter on your bike. But I have not tried this belt, so I do not have any experience about it, but the design looks good to me. Number seven, need for an internal gearbox. Belt works only on a straight line, but chain can work on a straight line or can work with a derailleur. So for the belt, you do need the internal gearbox system. Can be Rohloff, Pinion, Kinderney, or Shimano Alpha line. So this depends on you, what you like. But uh, of course, internal gearbox system is quite pricey and it costs, but it has a lot of benefit also, which I will talk about it in a future videos. Number eight, I think belt drivetrain is slightly more ecological compared to the derailleur and chain drivetrain. But please take this one with a pinch of salt 
because I'm not a scientist, I have not done any scientific research about this, but I can cycle with the belt drive train three times longer than a chain drive train. So I end up buying and consuming less. Number nine, e-bikes. Because belt is durable and lasts longer, for e-bikes is a really, really good option compared to the chain. So if you have an e-bike, I would really recommend a belt for it. Number 10, belt is lighter compared to the chain. So you end up saving a couple of hundreds of grams. But I don't want to emphasize the weight too much because we have this lightweight trend going on in our outdoor industry, which uh, I really do not support it. To be honest, all of these lightweight equipments, they keep breaking down all the time. So it's really, really, in my opinion, a problem. But Gates Carbon Drive technology is one of those innovation in the bicycle industry, which I totally support because Yes, it has cut the weight, it is lighter compared to the chain, but also, significantly, it has improved the durability. This thing lasts long and it is really rock solid. And I really like that. Number 10, spare parts. There's a no doubt about it, you won't find any spare part here in Uganda for your uh, belt drivetrain. But if you have a chain drivetrain, Everywhere here you can find a spare part and it's not a problem. But again, from other hand, you really need to carry always a spare belt with you just in case. And it's not that heavy, you can order it online and put it on your bags and you're good to go. Also another small tip here, in order to open your rear cog with a belt drive train, you don't need to carry actually any special tool. Um, you can go to any car mechanic anywhere in the world. They do have a tool with the belt, which usually they open the car oil filter. You can use this tool to grab the rear sprocket and open it. And the last one, if you ask me how it feels to ride with the belt, I tell you, it's really, really nice. Super smooth, it feels like a brand new chain you put it on your bicycle and it's really really awesome i would highly recommend so let me wrap this up for you the belt is definitely an, a big improvement in a bicycle industry it's more durable and more reliable compared to the chain so i do definitely recommend the belt drivetrain over the chain especially if you like the idea of an internal gearbox and you do need a new bicycle, I would definitely recommend go for a belt. It makes a lot of sense for commuting and especially for those who you want to cycle around the world, belt is just fantastic. But I don't want to encourage any of you to throw away your old bicycle, which has a trailer and chain and it works perfectly fine and buy a new bicycle. People have been cycling with trailer and chain drive train around the world for many decades and no problem. You can support this content directly on a Patreon where I put also a lot of extra videos, especially for our Patreons. And you can follow Nomad's Trails on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. I am right now on my world tour and I make this content while cycling across East Africa towards Cape Town in South Africa. And right now I am in Uganda and as soon as I finish this video, I am off towards uh, Tanzania. By the way, the next video will be the next vlog. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss out our upcoming movies and more gear review videos. Much love to all of you. Bye bye.